So what if a portion of the forest was haunted? Ah, ghost forest. Ah, uh ah, -uh. ghost mushroom forest. I'm sorry, Apollo called that a... a behisloth? Yes. Any any questions? I'm not seeing the sloth. I'm not I'm just saying I'm not seeing the sloth on this. Well, I mean, it's a little bit mechanized. Um, I guess that might be making it a little bit more um, agitated than, uh, than most sloths would be. But yeah, uh, these guys are... I'm, I'm gonna... If I had to characterize these enemies as a, as a gameplay conceit, I would say that uh, they are particularly Final Fantasy XIII. Jern, I'm gonna stop you there for a second. I realize that also, it, might yes. have, it might have felt like that was a lot, but that was only one enemy. I, I'm sorry so you had to find that, out this way. Yeah, it's not really clear, but uh, that that is actually Jern's uh, stock quote for when you hit uh, rank B in your combat streak. He's not referring to that fight, but like how the last time since we stopped fighting. But yeah, that could have been a little bit better. Uh, these guys, by the way, the, these these pumpkin guys, they're they're great. They're great fun. Uh, also, uh, one of them managed to kill Apollo, which they obviously had to cheat in order to do. Uh, but yeah, those guys are not actually random encounters. They are um, scripted and limited. There are seven of them. We have to find them. You might recall that we were tasked by a very legitimate businessman to harvest the fire from them, which is a nice, normal thing to ask people. So who wants these perfectly normal mushrooms? Uh, nobody really. They're just there to, to have people comment on and to get a trophy for. That's really it. A little disappointing. There was a prime opportunity for someone to demand only perfectly average mushrooms and complain that all of the other ones are too big. There will be a limited amount of mushroom discourse later. Anyway, um, I, I digress a little bit. Um, these sloths. They are... Um, as I was attempting to characterize them, particularly Final Fantasy XIII, in that they are, like, they are the ones with the gamified stagger mechanic, where you do, you do some very particular things, and you get them broken, and then you unload all of the damage, and that is pretty much the only way to fight them. They are, uh, they're not gonna die unless you get those staggers in. Well, fortunately, I know we have someone who is an expert at staggers, so... Mm -hmm. I think, actually, if you really push me, I'd say they work more like um, the Final Fantasy VII Remake or Lightning Returns for stagger mechanics, but... There's, there's a later video in which I managed to show off how to uh, stagger plus those guys. But you can also just do the regular stagger thing and get it to work. My point is, it's a lot of fun. All of the, the fighting in this game is actually good. The combat is, is, is good. The techniques are good. The enemies are good. In the boss fights, sometimes the environments are even good. I, 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 I don't know how... I'm kind of running out of ways to tell you that I like this game. Because the stuff in it is good. That said, I'm a little bit so-so on this bit of the forest in particular. 
I, uh, I do not like some of the mushroom perspectives. I'm honestly kind of disappointed that Apollo hasn't, like, chimed in with, actually, there's a lore reason why these mushrooms look like this. Like, like, come on, man. You can't, you can't introduce yourself as, as the lore guy and then not pipe in when somebody complains that the mushrooms look stupid because they're bent in a way to make them a platform. Uh. Now that I think about it, there's a there's a lore origin for the mushrooms, but nobody ever really talks about the way in which they grow. It's, it's like, yeah. Just one of those forgettable details. Anyway, uh, notable combat events when fighting these guys are like the hedgehogs, they will um, do a big spin dash at you. It really hurts to get hit by that. I don't recommend it, but on the other hand, it is an excellent opportunity to get in some countering. You can use the, the element guard arts, which have a built-in counter, or if you want to be really flashy, you can just do an ordinary perfect guard with your ordinary shield. That works too. Either way, a perfect guard will, unless I'm horribly misremembering, I think a perfect guard will just automatically knock them over on their back and let you deal a lot of damage. Have you noticed that these pumpkin guys really like to self-destruct? Mm. It's a whole thing. I never quite figured out a good way of dealing with it. Normally my way of dealing with it is to be in a party and have one of them take the hit. I mean, that's what they're for, right? Did that cat purposely just follow you up those stairs? I don't know how much to read into purposefully there. Like, they do have some AI which does try to follow you, and the enemies in this game are fully capable of reasoning around height differentials, as I think we've uh, comprehensively demonstrated in places. Like, the, the cats are honestly kind of unique, in that they are, I think, like the only enemy in this game whose AI is actually affected by you when you're not actively in combat. Do they follow you around because they want pets? Is that what's going on? I mean, that is definitely an interpretation. It would explain why, like, I, I don't know how obviously it's coming through in the audio that I've captured, but they, they run up and they meow and they purr at you while uh, murdering you with static electricity. It is brutally adorable. Yeah, I, I can't hear the purring, but I can hear the meows. Possibly I'll have, uh, I'll have captured something that makes that more apparent. Uh, but yeah, there are enemies that, like, aggro on you, but those enemies just immediately initiate combat. Whereas the cats will just try and socialize with you to uh, your considerable detriment. But, you know, it's the thought that counts. Look, the cats are trying, okay? It's not their fault that they have so much static that they just... Literally murder you? Okay, well, no, that that is absolutely something that they would do. That's... That's fair. Look, they're not trying to kill you with static. It just, you know, if you happen to die sometimes as a, as a result of their love, that's just... That's on you! That's just how it works, okay? Yeah, that's, that's on you. I'm sorry, I don't make the rules. It's their nature. You can't change their nature. You can't blame them for their nature. Don't be hazing on the static cats, man. They're just misunderstood. I am not hating on any kind of static cats. Or cats, or any cats in general. But 
but yeah, um, you will you will note that the cat and the the pumpkin are the only enemies that have actually managed to uh, actually KO any of our party. I don't know how to feel about that. Now that I think about it, the, the cats have pretty much exclusively KO'd Jern, and the pumpkins have pretty much exclusively KO'd Apollo. That would- Is there something to read into that? I was gonna say, that would kind of line up, because the cats, you know, because he's got- because Jern has the aggro, and the cats, on top of doing actual damage, also do a shit ton of passive damage? just by being near you, so that that lines up, actually. He's he's drawing the aggro, he's wearing the gigantic suit of metal armor, and he likes cats. It's okay, Jern, I'm right there with you. I would be dying to the cats, too. Mm -hmm. uh. So yeah, on top of being, you know, enormous geographically and like enormous puzzly and enormous um, enemy variety -y, and enormous chest e guys garden also has a like the largest number of plants for you to break of any location in the game also i hate that particular cluster of three mushrooms more than i think 99% of other uh, navigable environments anywhere in this game. I just... I just wanted to explicitly state that. Yeah, this whole area feels... unnecessary. Especially with how big the rest of Gaia's Garden is. Like, did yeah. we need this? Like, why didn't... Why couldn't we have just had, like one path to the temple, and then the other path, like, is this. There's something to be said for variety in, you know, not, not just the, the traditional quantifiable kinds of variety, but like areas that just have completely different feels. Uh, anyway, yeah, here we go. This is where Apollo decides to be like, hey, We've entered the infested jungle. I'm like, my dude, we entered the infested jungle several screens ago. But uh, this is the southern approach. And I think the game just expected us to enter from here and just didn't take into account the possibility of us simply not. Uh, but I digress. The, the overworlds in CrossCode are like all very different in in approach, in how they're in how they're written, and how you navigate them, in like in how they feel, in like the the biggest scale, the highest level approaches they take to their design. And honestly, I kind of love that, even if it does mean that you know, sometimes there are areas that. I dislike. But like that's that's how it would work. If there's a lot of variety, then there's there's gonna be stuff that you might not like, and there's probably a bunch of other people who really love Gaia's Garden but hate the other areas. It's a rich tapestry. I don't even think it's bad, I just think it's like it's too much. Like, they, they stuff too much into an already too big area. Yeah. Lady, I don't know how to tell you this. The, the, they're the same plant. Like, I... I don't hold it against the game as a design conceit, but there's there's this plant that is open in some areas and closed in other areas. And and like it's they're they're the same plant. 
it's just in, in different stages of its life. But the game counts them as a different plot and expects you to go hunting for the rare ones of, of both varieties. I'm like, you, you, you're kidding me here. Come on, man. You're supposed to be a professional botanist. So basically, uh, Jern might not literally be a dad, but Jern is a dad. At least by our standards anyway. I, I remind you that this game is set, like, several thousand years into the future, so uh, our standards of what music is considered to be dated are kind of not really how it works anymore. So, uh... Maybe the entire, like, 19th and 20th and 21st centuries are all just one cultural blob to these people. Like, man, all old Earth music is just clumped together into a single genre. Will the writers ever directly address this tension? Will they fuck? So for those following along, this is the uh, fourth entire distinct sub-area of Gaia's Garden. And this one's populated. It's another Shad Village. These ones don't like us. There seems to be a reason for that. Also, I was so sure that there would be like a treasure on the hidden platform obscured behind that tree in the lake. And it's, it's got, there's, there's a bridge that goes past it and there's a, a big hole in the side of the bridge that's like, hey, you want to jump out here? But no, there's there's nothing. It's it's just water. Immense disappointment. Like you'd think this game of all games would have gone for that bullshit. Like I don't mind when games do the, the incredibly cheeky hiding stuff when it's actually like by now it will be a cliché if I go on about games being a conversation between the designer and the player, but, you know, they are. There is a language that games develop, and if you play enough video games you can learn that language, you can perceive it, and you can read it. And it's, it's how you know if you're playing this kind of game and you just see this perfect arrangement of rocks next to an unremarkable wall you know you're gonna break that wall. It's like you you don't even perceive it, you just feel it in your soul. You know it to be true. It's a language, you can learn it. And then not being a chest on an obscure platform behind that tree is a betrayal of that language. And I am indeed bitterly disappointed by it. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm detecting some history here. Just a, a feeling. I absolutely should not have done that jump like that. 
should have gone over the bridge. You'll see, we, you you could have seen it when we when we walked along this bridge. We could have jumped down to it from the bridge above. But no, I did the flashy speedrun jump. Look, if you're not doing things the hard way on purpose, aren't you even really playing the game? That is true. Now, I'm sure I don't have to tell you that we are eventually going to resolve the history of this village before we're done here. Also, there's an entirely new kind of cat here. Are we going to go pet this cat? I can neither confirm nor deny the possibility of attempting to pet that cat. I mean, in as much as we're able to, I understand that Leia's ability to pet the cat is mostly limited to throwing balls at it, but... I can absolutely confirm that Jern is going to want to pet the cat. So yeah, this place is not for us. Yet. I don't know what it is about the the optional stuff, the jumping and, and the chests in Guy's Garden. Like, somehow, a lot of them just seem to me to feel unaccountably meaner than a lot of the rest of the game. Even when they're not, like, like, like I said, they're not actually harder. There's a whole other area where the, they ratchet the stuff up. It gets real silly. And yet, I like it more. I don't understand at all how that works. Um, anyway, that's it. That's everywhere. We've gone in a big circle, and we're now back at the crossroads screen with Henry on it. Yeah, I mean, that could have gone a lot worse. Now, I, I remind you that this is all edited footage. I, I neglected to count exactly how much was cut, but there was a lot of, of meandering stuff and, and being stuck and trying to get certain chests, and sometimes just going around in circles. I have done my best to uh, cut and edit all of this into something resembling a, a reasonably snappy progression through this place. But, it is a lot. We've, uh, this has taken a while. On the other hand, when you're actually, you know, playing this rather than trying to, to edit it down into content, that's not a problem. Like. I cannot stress enough that the uh, extent of this game is mostly an asset, like, it's an enormous amount of content and it's just great stuff that makes my brain happy done over and over again. Uh, by the way, you might have um, blinked and missed it, but we finished collecting all of the stuff for Mistake's Greatest Ever Stake. So I felt it would be a fitting conclusion to go and reap the rewards of that. By the way, these stakes require you to craft an entire other original item in order to craft the stakes themselves, but also these stakes give you an enormous range of healing buffs for like two minutes, basically. It's nuts. They're, they're great buff items. I mean, why not make some incredible stakes? 